Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the eagerly awaited Vision 5 2 single board computer from Star 5. This has got a quad core RISC V system on a chip, not an ARM or an x86 system on a chip. And the board comes in three models with two, four, or eight gigabytes of RAM and they sell for $55, $65 and $85 respectively. And what all this means is that the Vision 5 II is the first low-cost, high-performance RISC-V SBC that could be a true competitor to a Raspberry Pi. So let's go and take a closer look. So here we have our Vision 5 II, and specifically a 4GB model, which I bought as a super early bird backer for 68 Singapore dollars, which is about 51 US dollars. And even including shipping, this was delivered to me here in the UK for £51.43, which is a 61.62 US dollars. So there is no doubt in terms of cost, this is definitely a Raspberry Pi competitor. So let's open it up. Let's bring in uh, Stanley the knife and just uh, slice through if I can some of this uh, stuff. I can never get into things, can I? Go on, there we are. Got the thing off like that. Oh, it's lovely soft touch cardboard, matte laminate and things. There we are. I'll get in eventually, you know I will. And get inside, there we are. Oh, it's getting exciting now. Here we have our new single board computer. In a little bag, is it sealed? No, it isn't. And uh, it's slightly caught though. There we are. Here is the Vision 5 II. Now, the critical thing about this board is that it's got a RISC V system on a chip. And in case you don't know, RISC V is a free and open instruction set architecture, or ISA, that provides an alternative to the closed source ISAs used in today's x86 and ARM CPUs. And if you want to know more about what this means, watch my Explaining RISC-V video and look out for my RISC-V 2023 update. Now, just before we dig into the specifications of this board, I think it's worth comparing it to one I've got over here, which is a Vision 5 One launched in January 2022. And if we put the Vision 5 II down next to the Vision 5 One, it doesn't want to sit flat. Why is that? We will find out fairly shortly. But before we do, there's two important things I want to say about these two boards. And the first one is that the Vision 5 One is based on Star 5's J87100 system on a chip with two 1 GHz U74 cores and no GPU. Meanwhile, the Vision 5 II is based on a J87110 with four 1.5 GHz U74 cores and an Imagination GPU. Secondly, the Vision 5 One, which came with 8 GB of RAM, cost $179, whilst the Vision 5 II, coming with either 2, 4, or 8 GB of RAM, costs, as I've said already, $55, $65, or $85. So in only a year, Star 5 have delivered a far more powerful board for a far lower price. And this has to be very good news indeed for the development of RISC V. As we can see, the Vision 5 II adopts the increasingly common Pico ITX form factor, which means that the board is 100 by 72 millimeters with most of the major end user connectivity on one edge. At the heart of the board is Star 5's J87110 system on a chip, with its four Sci 5 1.5 GHz U74 64 bit cores that support the RV64GC ISA. These are coupled with an Imagination BXE432MC1 GPU, which by default is clocked at 400 MHz, although it can run at up to 600 MHz. To get a feel of how this chip weighs up against an ARM SoC, Sci 5 compare their RISC V U74 cores to ARM Cortex A53 and A55. 
Given that, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus has four 1.4 GHz A53 cores, it's therefore reasonable to state that, in terms of processing power, the Vision 5 II sits somewhere between a Raspberry Pi 3 and a Raspberry Pi 4. Turning to the main lung edge of the Vision 5 II, we find a 3.5mm audio jack, two Type-A USB 3 ports, and two Type-A USB 2 ports, even if all four of these ports are colour-coded blue to try and confuse us. We also get a full-size HDMI 2.0 connector, supporting up to 4K at 30 frames a second, and two RJ45 sockets. On most Vision 5.2 models, these both provide one gigabit Ethernet, although on this super early bird hardware, one of the ports is limited to 100 megabits. Turning to the first short edge, we find a two-pin fan header, together with a MIPI CSI or camera serial interface connector for hooking up a camera. Spinning 90, we then find a USB-C connector for supplying the board with 5 volt power, as well as indicator LEDs, a reset switch, and a 40-pin GPIO header. And you'll be pleased to hear that Python support for this connector is already available, as I'll demonstrate towards the end of this video. But before that, let's rotate to our second short edge, where we discover two MIPI DSI or Display Stereo Interface connectors that support 1080p LCD panels. Looking back at the top of the board, we can see our RAM, which here is 4GB, although sadly I have to report we've got no onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So for wireless, a USB dongle is required. It's also worth noting that nestled behind the GPIO header are these two DIP switches, which allow us to select booting from the SBI flash, a microSD card, eMMC, or UART. And talking of which, if we turn the board over like this, we discover three storage options. For a start, we've got a microSD card slot here, and then down here, we've got the connectors for an eMMC flash module. And then the thing that stops the board resting flat on a surface is this, a very welcome M.2 connector, which supports an NVMe SSD, which mounts neatly under the board just the way it should. And so there we are, the Vision 5 II, a reasonably priced SBC with a great specification that will allow a lot more makers, enthusiasts, and developers to start experimenting with RISC V. Greetings! I've now got everything connected up. I've added a small heatsink, as you can see, and in the microSD slot, I've got a card containing Debian. So, let's turn on the power. Here we go, and we have an illuminated red LED, and fairly soon, we'll have a flashing green LED. There we are, we've got that as well. And what we're booting up is an engineering release of Debian, as the final version is not yet available. And this is because these are very early days, both for the Vision 5 II, as well as for desktop RISC V computing more broadly. Anyway, let's log in using a root and a star 5 like that. And as the system sorts itself out, I'll let you know that today I had a very helpful email conversation with my contact at star 5. And what they've told me about software development is that, at present, we can only provide an engineering release of Debian. Desktop display capability needs to be optimised. We are working with Imagination, that's the company that makes the GPU, to solve the problem of GPU support. Because many problems have never been encountered before, the software team cannot give the time for the release version of Debian. We will continue to optimise and update the version. We are working with the community to complete Ubuntu and other distros. The time of completion cannot be estimated. In my opinion, it will take several months to mature the Vision 5.2 software ecosystem, which requires the joint efforts of the RISC V community. So, with all that explained, here we are on the Debian desktop, and it does work. 
So for example, if we go up to the menu, we can see there's quite a lot of software installed here. Some of this was here with the image, some of the stuff I've installed myself, but it's a pretty comprehensive suite of things available on this uh, RISC V system. Let's start off by running up LibreOffice Writer, which I think is very exciting because this is the first time I've seen LibreOffice running on RISC V hardware. So we'll give it a second, I'll let it run through in real time. We're almost there, almost running LibreOffice Writer. It's very exciting indeed. Come on, you can do it. It's done it. Here we are in LibreOffice Writer. And we'll do my normal thing of typing hello like that and selecting it. And we'll try and make it very large indeed. There we go. Let's go down to 96. Yes, we've got very large text here in LibreOffice Writer on a RISC-V system. But we won't get too excited. We'll come out of this, move on to something else. Let's uh, exit LibreOffice. And I'm sure it'll say, do we want to save our changes? No, we don't. There we go. And uh, let's have a look at something else. Let's run up, for example, under graphics, I've installed GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's installed without any issues. I do like the mushrooms we see when uh, GIMP runs up. And uh, almost there. There we are. Can we have some side panels, please? There we are, side panels as well. And if we just do a new document like that, hopefully this will work. And uh, it seems to. Come on, give us the whole thing. It has. And in honour of Star 5, we've got some stars here. We'll paint a few stars in honour of Star 5 making Division 5 too. But again, we don't want to get too excited, so we'll come out of this as well. We'll quit from... Uh, GIMP, and again, not save things. There we are. And uh, now I want to run up a terminal, which I'll do like that. And I've been trying to get the text in the terminal to be larger so you can see it clearer on the screen in video. And I've failed to do that. Doesn't matter what I do, I can't scale up the text in the terminal. So instead in post-production, I'm going to do this so we can see the terminal clearly. And now we'll run up a HTOP like this because I'm sure some of you want to see HTOP which is running fine there. We can see we've got our four cores. Not very busy at the moment, but everything is running okay. So uh, I've shown you that. Let's now come out of that F10. There we are. And I thought we'd execute an LSBLK, list block devices on the system, where at the moment, all we can see is the micro SD card from which we're running the system. And I have tried plugging in an M.2 NVMe SSD, but it isn't detected. But I have installed HD parameters anyway, so I thought we'd test the speed of the micro SD card. And somewhere in here, I've got uh, the right command. There it is. Let's just uh, run that, see what speed we get. Well, I know what speed we get. I've done this test before, but I'll run it for you and feign excitement. What's happening? There we are, 21.15 megabytes a second. And we're running here from a SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card, which can obtain speeds of towards about 100 megabytes a second. So Clearly there's something going on here with the uh, interface to the micro SD card. And what I'm also going to do is to plug in an external SSD like this. There we go. And if I once again do an LSBLK list block devices, we can see it appear there. And we'll test the speed of that, which is of course a surrogate test of the speed of the USB 3 interface here, which is giving us, what, 240 megabytes a second. Again, very slow, under half the speed I can get from that particular connected drive. So again, there's something going on in this engineering release of Debian with the speed of storage interfaces. Anyway, let's come out of the terminal like that, because the final thing we haven't looked at, I'm sure some of you want to see, is a browser, pretty important in the modern desktop operating system. So down under internet, we have a development version of Firefox. This is highly unstable, so I've left it till last. Hopefully it'll run up. Cross your fingers. Go on, be nice for us, Firefox. Show us what you can do in RISC V. And uh, it's working, look, I think. It's going to be OK. It's going to take us to the Explaining Computers website. And with that, I think I'll bring this demo to a close. Guess what? It's me back again, and I've now wired two LEDs with current limiting resistors to some GPIO pins here on Division 5 2. And I've done this so I can do a little test because over here in Debian, I've installed Python, I've installed Sony, and I've also installed Vision 5 GPIO. 
which, as you can probably guess, is a library for controlling the GPIO pins on the Vision 5.2 in Python. And as you can see, I've written some very basic code just to uh, test out the principle. So if we bring back the shot of the LEDs, and if we now run the code like this, there we are. It works. We've got a couple of flashing LEDs, and I'm sure some people are thinking, he's just got a couple of flashing LEDs. What's the point in that? But I'm sure other people are thinking, ah, this means we have got control of GPIO of this GPIO connector on the Vision 5.2 in Python. And that, I think, is very exciting because it means we're already in a position to start doing RISC-V SBC maker projects here on the Vision 5.2. The Vision 5.2 is an important SBC that will provide wider access to RISC-V hardware capable of running a Linux distro. Now, I'm sure there are people in the comments going, Chris, it's just like some of the ARM boards you review on the channel. Great hardware hasn't got the software support. However, I don't think that type of criticism is valid in this particular case. And that's for two reasons. Firstly, end-user Linux distro-based RISC-V computing is very new. It's only been possible at all for a few years. The hardware has been very expensive. It got less expensive in 2022 with the launch of boards like the first Vision 5, but it's only now with the launch of the Vision 5.2 and a couple of other boards, and they were coming out in 2023, that we're going to get more and more people having access to what is in the broadest sense a development board. This is a development board for the whole RISC V end user computing you know, ecosystem. And we should expect that boards like this will have to be in the hands of developers for some time before we get the same level of support for desktop RISC V computing that we currently enjoy for x86 and ARM. And it's also worth remembering I bought super early bird hardware. This was shipped to me and the other super early bird backers a few months ahead of when most people will get their boards. So when most people get their hands on a Vision 5.2, the software will have advanced because time will have passed. It's also worth remembering that Star 5, the company who make this board, are not like the manufacturers of most ARM SBCs, because they don't just make the Vision 5.2, they also make its system on a chip, the JH7-110. And therefore, they've got a massive incentive to develop software to support their chip in the marketplace. We know that already there's going to be at least one more SBC launched in 2023 using the JH7 110, the Star 64 from Pine 64. And so development for this board has got knock-on implications more broadly for other boards in the ecosystem, and that will pull in developers. Developers like a new frontier, and RISC-V is a new frontier, and working to develop for this board is part of that, and that will catalyze development and make things happen. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.